What's that? He said, I like Krishna class too, Daddy. Ah, nice. <laughs> That's so awesome. I know. Uh, you are so fortunate to have a son like that. <laughs> I know, I know. And I've he's fortunate to have you. It's just part of the, all the divine plan, I think. You yes, know? sir. No so, doubt. Uh, we're on seven. Can you see that now? Can you see it on the screen? Uh, I got my book here anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, it's still it doesn't loading. Doesn't matter. You see it because you, you're using your book. It's still loading, but I don't need yeah. it. Yeah. We're on thirteen and fourteen, right? Correct. Cool. They were supposed to do that yesterday, but or last week, but uh, nobody showed up, so we I was a little up. late. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, it was, it's no problem. I understand. I mean, I have no idea. I don't have kids, you know, so I was like counted the, the, the reasons not to get married when I was a brahmachari. Yeah. I see some couple fighting and then I would, I would say, uh, you know, to myself, yeah, that's reason number 647 not to get married, you know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and then, and then I just wanted a date and this woman ruled me, ruled me reeled me in like a fish and so because <laughs> she was a good cook and uh she liked the same kind of music i did and everything but uh you know it's good for me it was good for me because it got my uh woman's kind of like a fort you know if uh it protects you from your senses mm -hmm. that's what they say you know there's the the pastime of gajendra and the crocodile in the bhagavatam later on Talks about yep. how this crocodile attack. You ever heard that story? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the the crocodile was in his element. He was in the water, but the 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 elephant he was in the water too, and he got weak. You know, the crocodile was thriving because he could eat. You know, and uh, the crocodile was getting tired, or the elephant was getting tired, and so he just rose up a lotus flower with his trunk and surrendered to Krishna and Krishna came and cut the right. crocodile's head off. Sweet. Care of the rock. Okay, so we're, we're on uh, 13 and 14 here. Why don't you go ahead and read the translation? When the respective warriors of both camps, namely the Kauravas and the Pandavas, were killed on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and the dead warriors obtained their deserved destinations. And when the son of Dhritarashtra fell down lamenting, his spine broken, being beaten by the club of Bhima Singh, the son of Dronacharya, Ashwastama, beheaded the five sleeping sons of Draupadi and delivered them as a prize to his master, foolishly thinking that he'd be pleased. Duryodhana, However, disapproved of the heinous act, and he wasn't pleased in the least. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> human <laughs> human nature. I mean, it's like all the the ghastly stuff that happened back then. You know, it's right? happening all the time nowadays. You know, <laughs> but uh, even Duryodhan, who was Thanks, like a total bro. demon, he had a little bit of scruples. That one. You know, he, he, he thought it was wrong that he beheaded all of Draupadi's sons because Draupadi's sons were meant to inherit the throne. Mm -hmm. But anyway, purport. Transcendental topics of the activities of Lord Krishna and the Srimad Bhagavatam began from the battle at the Kurukshetra, where the Lord himself spoke about himself in the Bhagavad Gita. Like, yeah, like who else is he going to talk about? <laughs> That's why he gets up in the morning. He meditates on himself. Who else is he going to meditate on? He's the supreme personality of Godhead. He is everyone and everything. It's kind of funny, you know. He gets it up is. in the morning, he meditates on himself, and then when he gets done with his morning activities, he leaves all the palaces in Dwarka and merges into himself, and then he goes to the assembly house. But each one of his queens thinks that he's like paying attention to her only because he's always there. He, they don't even realize that he's like 16,000 of them. They're doing different things in That's this individual cool. palace. I mean, it's like unbelievable. I, I mean, who can enjoy more than Krishna? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> he, he can do that because he's God and we're not. 
and that's obvious, you know. So Krishna makes it pretty obvious that we're not God, and it's he okay. is God. You know? So um, let's see here. Uh, therefore, both the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam are transcendental topics of Lord Krishna. The Gita is Krishna Katha, or topics about of Krishna, because it is spoken by the Lord. Uh, there's two different kinds of scriptures. There's um, uh, Shruti and Smriti. Uh, I think Shruti is like spoken by Krishna and Smriti is uh, spoken about Krishna. I'm not sure about that. But those two things, Bhagavatam's one of them and the, the Gita is another one because the Gita was spoken by Krishna. It's directly coming out of his mouth. So yeah, from the horse's mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, Ma, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted everyone to be informed of both Krishna Kantas by his order. He said, uh, Lord Chaitanya said um, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, he said, um, just on my order, become a guru. You know, try to just try to instruct everybody in the land to follow the instructions of Krishna and the Shri Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And this way become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in the land. That's Lord Chaitanya's order. So if you complete, if you try to fulfill his order, he'll empower you to do that. And you'll get all kinds of uh, realization and, and enthusiasm. You know what the word enthusiasm comes from? Hmm. It comes from the root... Of the etymological root is N, which means in, and theos, which means God. So enthusiasm means have God in you, firing you up, you know? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a really cool, like a lot of these Sanskrit words, or a lot of these words go back to, uh, you know, spiritual origins. Emerson talked about that in his book. You know, like all, all these different things that we call in nature, they do have a spiritual counterpart. And so, you know, the, everything originally emanates from Krishna. Lord Chaitanya himself actually made a whole dictionary that was based on Krishna, uh, words of Krishna and, and uh, the language. They, he, he taught that to his students, even though he himself was like a teenager. But he was so smart, he, te he taught grammar and it was based on all these, and on all the, the aspects of Krishna. So, uh, the, you know, he was, cool. genius. he was a complete genius. A big one. And uh, therefore, both versions of Lord Krishna and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are identical. Lord Chaitanya desired that all who are born in India seriously understand such Krishna katas and then after full realization, preach the transcendental message to everyone in all parts of the world. That will bring about the desired peace and prosperity of the stricken world. You know, we could use that about right now. Peace and you know stuff like that. Yeah, I almost <laughs> forget what it's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean you know it's like everybody's completely. You know, I, I'm reading I'm reading a a book um, by one of my favorite uh, uh, like TV show talk show hosts. Uh, she she I've been following her for about twenty years, uh, and. I started listening to her when I was involved in politics in 2000, early 2000s. She was on a, a radio program called Air America. And uh, right now she's the top host for MSNBC, but she wrote a book about fascism called Prequel. And yeah. I'm trying to explain it, you know, because I'm a devotee, I think I can like lend a, a little bit of a light to what the, the fraught, dangerous situation that the world is in right now, as far as like, becoming a totalitarian uh, nation. This nation itself, and also lots of other nations, are becoming totalitarian um, regimes, you know. And it's really, it's it's not good for devotees because like Lord Chaitanya, he, he did a mass, he was like the original civil disobedience guy, you know, because when the Kazi broke his murdangas when they were out, performing Harinam on the streets. People didn't like it and they complained to the Kazi and the Kazi sent his men and broke the Murdangas and said, you can't do that anymore. So he, he organized like 100,000 devotees, all his, his residents, you know, 
with pitchforks and torches and stuff and he was afraid he, he they trapped his garden all around his mansion you know this, the Kazi. <laughs> he was like the governor of bengal you know and he was terrified you know but lord shaitani treated him really he was so humble he actually convinced him and he became a devotee even though you know <laughs> and he gave him permission and uh he he it's famous you know lord shaitani was the humblest person and that's a good way to talk to people you know if you approach them with ability and uh and and you know not thinking yourself the you know such a great person you know and uh that's the way you can approach effort everybody respects but expect no respect on in return and you don't you think yourself lower in the straw on the street Lord Chaitanya embodied that sentiment, you know, so that's a way to preach Christian consciousness because then everybody will be inquiring, you know, like uh, humility is really, you know, nobody likes like a guy that's like a control freak, a guy or a woman that's like a real egocentric control freak, you know, some mm -hmm. people, but only demons do really, but devotees are just the opposite. They're, they're completely humble. So why don't you uh, read this translation here? And there's no purport. Uh, Draupadi, the mother of the five children of the Pandavas, after hearing of the massacre of her sons, began to cry in distress with eyes full of tears, trying to pacify her and her great loss. Arjuna spoke to her thus. Did I start recording this? I don't think I <laughs> i can't remember I, I told my wife you know she should probably look, start looking into like dementia homes for me you know because i'm getting old Very <laughs> uh, this technology is kind of difficult regardless yeah. yeah uh why don't you read this this translation too the next one okay oh gentle lady when i present you with the head of that brahmana after beheading him with arrows from my Gandiva bow, I shall then wipe the tears from your eyes and pacify you. Then, after burning your son's bodies, you can take your bath standing on his head. <laughs> this is like uh, medieval stuff, you know? Right. No doubt. As an enemy who sets fire to the house, administers poison, attacks all of a sudden with deadly weapons, plunders wealth, or usurps agricultural fields, or entices one's wife, is called an aggressor. Such an aggressor, though he be a Brahmana, or a so-called son of a Brahmana. I always like that. Hey, you son of a Brahmana. <laughs> he has to be punished in all circumstances. When... Arjuna promised to behead the aggressor named Ashwatthama. He knew well that Ashwatthama was the son of a Brahmana. He was the son of his martial arts teacher, Drona, uh, Duryodhana, yep. or Dronacharya, I mean. Uh, because, and, but because the so-called Brahmana acted like a butcher, he was taken as such, and there was no question of sin in killing such a Brahmana's son, who proved to be a villain. Okay, go ahead with the next one. Let's stay. I like how he kind of left it up to his wife. So. I always do, you know, as the man in the house, I always do what my, my uh, but what I want, but I have to ask my wife what it is that I want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like to be married, you know, because happy <laughs> wife, happy life, you know, otherwise, you know, your wife is miserable. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, 17, right? Go ahead and read that one. Arjuna, who's guided by the infallible Lord as friend and driver, thus satisfied the dear lady by such statements. Then he dressed in armor and armed himself with furious weapons. Getting into his chariot, he set out to follow Ashvastama, the son of his martial teacher. In other words, he wasn't playing around. Go ahead no. and read the translation too. Next one. Ashwasthama, the murderer of the princess, seeing from the princes, seeing from a great distance Arjuna coming at him with great speed, fled in his chariot, panic struck, oh, 
just to save his life as Brahma fled in fear from Shiva. Leave it. Finish this. I, I, I can't remember that pastime of Brahma's fleeting in fear from Shiva. I can't remember that one. It was whenever... <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they're talking about whenever Shiva took off his fourth head because he thought he mistaken Brahman to, to when Brahma co-created the material situation he was very proud of himself and Shiva saw that and thought he was full of full of pride. pride yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know more than I do see you've only been a devotee like a couple of years and, and you know more than I do already I wouldn't so say that. That's that's pretty awesome, you know. Like Lord Shiva, he's got the ability and the power to do that, you know. Just like Balaram, you know, Balaram, mm -hmm. one guy in the Namasharanya forest, the the Ramaharshan Sutta, who is sitting on the uh, on the the uh, Vyasasan, which is you speak uh, from, you know, when you're giving Bhagavatam class, and you know, he. He didn't get up. Everybody else in the assembly got up for Lord Balaram when he entered the assembly. But Ramaharshan Sutta was just still sitting there. He didn't even care. And Lord Balaram said, you know, I I have invented myself just to kill this kind of, you know, so-called religious person. And so he took mm -hmm. a blade of grass and he just like touched him with a blade of uh, kusha grass and he fell down. And everybody That's gasped. That's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> but you know he, you know that's what the Lord Ch the Krishna he comes to annihilate the miscreants and and protect the devotees, and so one of the things that Lord Krishna and Balaram they're both the same person you know supreme person but that's what they do, they uh they make things right when they go astray and you gotta you gotta give props to the supreme personality of God and when you come I don't care who you are, you know, unless you're envious like Daksha Daksha. Daksha, when Shiva came into his whoa, assembly, whoa, whoa. when what, what, Shiva was sitting there and Daksha was was came into the assembly, and Lord Shiva was the only one sitting, but everyone else stood up when Daksha came in, came in. But Lord Shiva was meditating yeah. at, in his heart. That's what. Oh he yeah. <laughs> so he he didn't even like really even notice, and so. He didn't but even mean anything by it. Daksha thought he was his body. You know, he thought, oh, well, he's not res paying respect to me. And so he started blaspheming him. And that yeah. caused huge, huge conflagration. You know, like all these demons were attacking each other, gouging their eyes out and everything. But uh, <laughs> then they created a huge demon. And, and you know, like, because Dakshiani, um, Lord Shiva's wife, wanted to go to this one assembly and uh, because she wanted to hang out with her uh, with her relatives and stuff it was a big party you know and all the she saw all the demigods flying in the sky in their airplanes and she wanted to go you know yeah that and, would suck <laughs> and she asked her husband if she would she she could go and he said no no that that's not a good idea you know because yeah. you know, my wife always asked me she she says if you want to she wants to go out she says you know, you told me in the Bhagavatam that that, that that women always like to get dressed up and go out with their husbands. So that's what I want to do, you know. And so she she wanted to do that, but Lord Shiva said it wasn't a good idea. And of course it wasn't because Daksha insulted her. Yeah. Her mother, and she sat down and meditated on the fiery elements in her body and burned herself to death right in front of his eyes. Mm -hmm. He didn't even blink. He just, you know, he was so filled with envy thinking that he was you know that he was right and lord shiva was just a debauch he was always hanging around in clearmentoriums and, mm -hmm. and ghosts and goblins and stuff <laughs> and he yeah. thought he was so great and so lord shiva created this huge demon named virabhadra out of a you know plucked a piece of hair out of his head and threw it on the ground it became a huge fiery demon and he Desecrated came in created the place just completely destroyed the place. I mean, why don't they make this kind of thing? Uh, I mean, you got like Black Panther. It's not even real. Why not? Why not make a? Why not make a? a like some of these battles or some of these these things like Shiva and the sacrifice, you know, a Daksha, and these kind of pastimes where there's like so much potential for like a big screen production, you know. 
Maybe I, I think we're moving time. closer to it. I think we're someday, moving closer somebody to Somebody will do it, you know, but it has to be done by, Prabhupada is very strong about, about this point. These things, they have to be done by devotees. In other words, the actors have to be devotees. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's useless. You know, if you don't have right. any spiritual, uh, you, if you don't have any spiritual realization, how can you do something? It's just fake. You mm -hmm. don't have any idea what you're doing. You could say the lines, you could say it very expertly, but you have no potency. Right. It's like, right. It's like a milk touched by the lips of a serpent. You don't even want to listen to that. You know, you don't want to even hear it. That's, that's what where I all told. these, that's where all these uh, movies and uh, universes are being inspired whether the the artists know it or not it's krishna allowing different levels of potency come through their being i mean just examine some of the superheroes from marvel and dc they they even just straight up took some of the gods and put them in there like thor and odin and whatnot from the demigod realm so yeah oh, well that's what star wars was you know about star wars right yeah you know, yeah that was based on uh Star Wars. What story that was based on in the what? Vedas? Totally based on the Ramayana, because okay. you know uh, this guy named Joseph Campbell. He was a uh, he was a college professor, very popular. He had his all all his classes were like packed with students, college students. He wrote uh, he he did classes on myth. Now myth may be true, it may be false, but it's not really necessarily false. But he was telling George Lucas on his ranch there. He's he's the guy that started the Star Wars. George Lucas, right? He, mm -hmm. he produced the Star Wars. And the reason he did is because he heard all these so-called myths from um, from Joseph Campbell, and he liked the story so much that he recreated it. He liked the drama, and he liked the story in the background, you know. So uh, you, you saw, you've seen Star Wars, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Luke Skywalker, that's Ramachandra. His brother, that's the dude, that's uh, Harrison dude. And uh, you know who Chewbacca is? And Princess Leia, of course, is Sita. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know who Chewbacca is? Hanuman. He's Hanuman. <laughs> this, one, this one devotee, his name is Satyaraj. He wrote a whole book about that, how that, film was produced based on the ideas of the Ramayan. It's called the Jedi and the Lotus. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And it, it like it was one guy in Long Island, he gives classes on that. He was an old Prabhupada disciple and he he likes to produce things that people are interested in so they can kind of like get people interested. Everybody it's like Disney, you know, I we actually are subscribed to the Disney Channel for a while because my wife is a huge Swifty. So we were checking out some of these Marvel comic things, you know. Some of them are good, some are trash. I didn't even like the second uh, uh, Black Panther movie, but some of them are pretty good. But a lot of these these kind of things, especially that one there, is based on, you know, like real stories. Because you can't really um, beat a true story like that. And they are true. It's not a myth or like false. You know, that's mm -hmm. a true story that had really happened millions of years ago. No doubt. That's so pretty cool. Um, go, on, go on here. Uh, the next verse, you go ahead and read translation. When the son of the Brahmana, Ashwasama, saw that his horses were tired, he considered that there was no alternative for protection outside of his using the ultimate weapon, the Brahmastra, the nuclear weapon. Yeah, I mean, this even got nuclear weapons. I mean, what kind of a movie would that be? You know? <laughs> I mean, be awesome. and you can do it like by mantra. It's, these are these are all like material things, but they're activated by a mantra and they can be directed to any particular point. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's like, that would be an awesome movie. You know? It really would. So far, they got some pretty good cartoons, but, you know, they can only do so much with that. Yeah. They they did a really good job with the with the Krishna cartoon. The, Krishna, they got yeah. a really they got a really good Durga cartoon. They got a really good Ganesha cartoon. Hanuman. 
Yeah, but uh, these are for kids. I mean, you should have it realistic. Right. Prabhupada, Prabhupada actually wanted it kind of like a realistic type of thing, you know? That would be so awesome. Yeah, purport. And the ultimate issue only, when there is no alternative, the nuclear weapon called the Burmaster is applied. See, nobody can do that because you have to know how to, like, withdraw it, you know? Once you yeah. launch something like that, you have to know how to control it. Otherwise, you could blow up the freaking world. Right. The whole it's a it's a chain reaction. It's a nuclear ex chain reaction. The word Dvijatama is significant here because Ashvatama, although the son of Dhritara, uh, Dronacharya, yeah, Dronacharya, was not exactly a qualified Brahmana. The most intelligent man is called a Brahmana, but it is not a hereditary title. Ashvatama was also so formally called a Brahma Bandhu or the friend of a Brahmana. Being a friend of a Brahmana does not mean that one is Brahmana by qualification. A friend or son of a Brahmana, when fully qualified, can be called a Brahmana, but not otherwise. Since Asvatthama's decision is immature, he's purposely ca called herein the son of a Brahmana. <clears throat> immature, to say the least. I mean, he, he used that Brahmastra to try to um, kill Prikshit in the womb of his mm -hmm. mother. He directed that Brahmastra weapon right at her womb. And you can do it that exactly. And that's why Krishna had to, you know, shrink himself down into like thumb size, enter her womb and he was like strolling around and wielding his club inside the womb. And uh, Richard saw that. As, he was as a reckless. Emperor. As he was an a reckless son saw of that. And he, <laughs> that's why he's called Pritchard because he saw Krishna when he was, in the womb like that and he was always looking hey, who's that guy i want to see him again and he's like That's, <laughs> his name is Pritchard, which means inquiring you know he says where is krishna he is always like for the rest of his life he was looking for krishna because <laughs> <laughs> once you got a sight of krishna you know you, you, you ever you want to see him again it's like a dream you know you wake up from a dream if it's a good dream you want to go back in a dream world and you can't do it you know that's a that's a bummer but we read that reality, we read know? about Narada. Narada had that experience. We read about that recently. Yeah, he, Narada Muni uh, <laughs> fought his mother, and his mother forgot the whole thing because women, you know, they have like other things on their minds, and so he taught her. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, like Prahlad Maharaj, he was in the womb of his mother, and he heard every single word, even though he was in the womb. You know, because it's it's a mystic process. It's not really even an audible thing, you know, with, with these saints like Narada Muni. You know, he even made a, like a, a hunter into a pure devotee. And, and Haridas Thakur turned a prostitute into a pure devotee. She tried to make Brilliant. him. But, and even Maya Devi herself, herself tried to like, you know, seduce him. But he wasn't having it. And so he just kept, you know, like he said, you know, I'll surely satisfy, you know, she wanted to have sex with him, you know. So he said, okay, yeah, sure, I'll do that. When I'll, I'm done chanting. I've finished my round. So I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> so gladly satisfy your every desire, you know. And he, of course, he never got done chanting because he chants like 330,000 names a day. So he had no uh, idea. <laughs> and then he, and she started chanting along with him. She started a whole round, I'll kiss and then she just became a devotee and she shaved her head and and he she he told her just to sit down here and worship the Tulsi tree, water it, and then chant Hare Krishna. And she became a great devotee. She became a saint. And she was a prostitute. So that's the yep. power of, of devotional service. Okay, so uh <clears throat> go ahead and read this translation here. Since his life was in danger, he touched water and sanctity and concentrated upon chanting the hymns for throwing nuclear weapons, although he did not know how to withdraw such weapons. Yeah, it's like if there was a war, you know, like if you have like a fail-safe system, let's say nuclear holocaust was going to happen and Russia was Russia was sending nuclear weapons across the Canadian border, you know, uh, and uh, there was no fail-safe or something, that would be like if, if a nation didn't have any fail-safe system or something. You know, you don't not like just start Dr. pressing Trump. buttons. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't withdraw <laughs> and press a button and blow up the weapon before it hits. You know, you you have to be able to do that in case you make a mistake. You know, uh huh. Cross your fingers and 
yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he didn't know what he was doing, and he, and so you know, like he, Arjuna had to actually step in and and correct the situation. Reckless son of a brahmana. Yeah, the stupid son of a brahmana. <laughs> Purport: The subtle forms of material activities are finer than grosser methods of material manipulation. Such subtle forms of material activities are affected through purification of sound. You know, the scientists don't know any of this stuff. They don't know. They don't have any idea. They don't even know. Emerson said, you know, you you think, you know, like so much scientific knowledge, but they don't even know. Can't know your eyelids at all. Can't know your eyelids at I love you. I love you, buddy. I'm being saying. Okay. The uh, closest. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, are you going out there? 